Welcome to Jack of All Trades 505. I'm your host Joseph. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Uh, this was a fun freehand practice project that uh, I had been wanting to uh, attempt this image for a while. I found this on a uh, Facebook group, uh, Chicano Street Art. Uh, and basically, uh, because the figure is in black and white and wearing a sombrero, I decided, uh, very similar to the Zapata piece that I had already done previously, I decided to attempt to render out this image uh, using the same technique that I did for the Zapata. Uh, using only the airbrush uh, without any freehand stencils, paper masks, anything. This is just the control of the airbrush and erasing techniques. Now, I do implement a couple of different erasing techniques, one of which is uh, using water, pure water sprayed through the airbrush. Uh, with uh, Because what I'm spraying is, is the dynamic tattoo ink on hammer mill cardstock and uh, this uh, paper and ink uh, for whatever reason uh, does not fully absorb into the paper so uh, you can use the water to spray directly on the ink and wipe uh, wash it back uh, what I will say is that the uh, here in this section, you've seen that uh, that I uh, started in on the face and I went a little too dark on one section of the face. So I uh, attempted to uh, erase it or clear it using the water and it didn't clear enough. And before it was dry, I went in with an aggressive eraser and tried to erase it and I actually damaged the paper. So uh, I moved on to other areas and was continuing to to flesh out this this piece, but I was running into issues with my airbrush, and I just mean uh, maybe that I needed to clean that airbrush better. And but uh, in the course of uh, working with it, I just decided to switch to my uh, Iwata Custom Micron. Now, uh, again, I've said in my other videos, this airbrush does give the absolute thinnest. Uh, lines the most precision available so if you are going to be doing entirely freehand then yes it's worth the $500 because it, it really does allow you to uh, freehand uh, very well now I've uh, used other airbrushes in other pieces that I have freehand and again they do produce fairly sharp lines not as sharp but uh, in this instance I just went ahead and decided to grab my micron uh, since it is the same airbrush I used for the Zapata piece as well. Uh, the solution that I had in the Creos PS270 was a one-to-one -one mixture of you know 50% water 50% ink. Uh, when I switched to the Micron, I actually reduced that again down to about a 25% um, reduction. So 25% ink to 75% water. Uh, just this, this tattoo ink is so super black and concentrated that if you uh, use this straight out of the bottle, you'd have almost no tonal variation. So that's why I do dilute these colors plus uh, these ink. Plus it does make it uh, easier to erase through and, and create those uh, different variations in tonal value. Uh, here I just uh, went into the hat and started to flesh in the details uh, in the brim of the hat. Um, I believe that right here I did uh, take a break to go eat something i stepped away from the computer in my workstation forgot to press pause so there is a a, a short section here where i did um step away so i apologize about that uh while we have a moment uh i will take the time to say that um this uh i also uh was using a couple of other um, tools besides the airbrush and the water. I was using uh, a couple of different aggressive erasers, uh, Stadler, Mars, Razor, Pencil, 
uh, aggressive pencil eraser. It's, uh, I guess, intended for ink. Um, I was using the, uh, just a regular graphite pencil eraser and uh, something that I just picked up. These are refills for uh, the electric eraser. They're called the Sun Dolphin Seed Eraser EED6R. They are a, um, a rubber that is mixed with sand, so, uh, a fine silica sand. So they are actually more aggressive than uh, pretty much any other eraser so far, uh, especially when you combine it with the electric eraser. It, uh, it'll even pull up this ink uh, up to the white of the surface without damaging the paper. And uh, if then the cool thing that I found with this uh, this eraser is that if you hold it flat against the surface and vary the amount of pressure that you apply to this eraser, you can actually erase a broader, softer area um, compared to when you uh, kind of tilt it on its side and use a sharp edge to really pull up the white of the surface underneath. So, uh, again, if you have a chance, I found these on eBay. Uh, they were direct buy from Japan. Took them a few weeks to get here. But, uh, like I said, so far I'm very, very pleased with them. I'm going to be using them in uh, even more uh, pieces uh, here in the near future. So we'll see how, how they uh, continue to work. But uh, for this piece, they worked very, very well. Uh, you'll notice that I use the electric eraser quite a bit. Uh, this is an Athmat electric eraser. Got it off of Amazon. And it was about 20, 30 bucks, I think. Uh, not very expensive at all. Um, here you see that I was working off of the gun belt, just again, freehanding in all the details. Um, when I worked off of the buckle, I, I th just misjudged where I was at and thought that uh, from the buckle I was actually working into the uh, corset that she's wearing. And uh, I, that's not where I intended, uh, where uh, any tone actually goes. So I tried to cleared out with the water it was unsuccessful so I just left it to dry and I will revisit that area later so now I'm working on the corset again trying to preserve the white of the paper for the highlights and then spraying in uh, the darker values where I see them on her right arm I am just uh, freehanding it in lightly the shapes and tones uh, behind her arm are going to more define that out so I didn't need to really uh, concentrate on defining her arm uh, at this point in time just to get the uh, just needed to get the tonal values in uh, here working on the other side of the corset uh, near the left arm again whatever shapes I see in the shadows I try to map those out first before covering them with uh, with the tonal value um, just trying to see what shapes I can, um, draw them out with the airbrush, and then fill in, uh, just like uh, just as I would uh, with a charcoal uh, powder using uh, stumps, uh, even paint brushes, um, various tools to achieve the the look that I wanted. Uh, here you'll just notice that uh, um, I did go ahead and erase that uh, miss mark that I made on her stomach area by holding the electric eraser flat to the surface and varying the amount of pressure to lightly pull up the ink without damaging the paper. So again, this worked very, very well. Uh, the overspray that was created when I tried to clear it from uh, with the water, uh, again, it, it kind of went into an area that I knew was going to be covered with uh, tone, uh, darker tonal value. So I went ahead and left it, didn't bother trying to clean it up or fix it. Uh, you can, you if you kind of know that you're going to run into that situation, again, just think about uh, what's going on around the, the area that you just sprayed in. Uh, what area you're going to be working off next and uh, try not to create too many hard lines because uh, in nature uh, you're going to see soft lines, hard lines, shadows, transitions and uh, the more effectively you can translate those markings uh, the better your, your artwork is going to look. 
Uh, here again, uh, I would see values. Um, I'd step back. I'd see that I need to work an area, uh, lighten up an area. So I'd go in with the eraser, a little bit of uh, water erasing towards her left breast. Uh, and then I start working on the fairing, uh, working on the background and establishing the shapes. And again, um, I did spend about an hour and a half uh, drawing out this, uh, this, this figure beforehand with a, with a pencil uh, using a light box. So I took uh, the image, I cropped it, blew it up. Uh, so that it would print out on two eight and a half by 11 pieces. I then taped those pieces together, cutting away the borders that connected them and created an 11 by 17 image, which I then um, illuminated with a light box and traced out the major landmarks. Uh, again, this in tattoos, this is what we would call a stencil. Uh, if you look at the HD stencils, high definition stencils, Essentially, they're doing the same thing as, as what I'm doing by making all these tiny, tiny little marks of every little indication of where uh, holes are, where highlights are, and shadows. Uh, essentially, the HD stencils allow you to spray through, uh, through the stencil and automatically create the highlights, uh, midtones, and shadows uh, marked out so that you can uh, further... Uh, finish them out and work on them but uh, the uh, the the airbrush itself the stencil does not create the the image for you it's only a tool that you're actually using to uh, uh, mark out where these uh, where where uh, the figures are going to be where your shadows are going to be and you actually have to go in and and uh, further develop them. So don't think of it as cheating. Uh, if you have, if you do stencil it out, uh, draw it out, i.e., draw it out, or uh, use uh, a tool like the HD stencils, um, because again, it, it's the end result. Uh, uh, if you were to look at this drawing uh, up close before I started adding any uh, any color or tonal value to it you would already see that um, I did not, um, that it, it basically, the, the stencil looks like a topographical map of Utah. I'm, uh, there are uh, so many markings that it's hard to distinguish uh, what each marking is supposed to mean or represent. Uh, now for myself, when I'm doing these stencils, I will use uh, solid uh, lines to, obviously uh, establish where there is a solid line and for shadows when uh, just marking out the basic shapes of the shadows i'll use very very faint dash and dots to to mark out the shapes of those uh, shadows or highlights so that way they don't show through from underneath uh, here in the video notice that i just uh, again used the mars stadler eraser uh, this eraser uh, is a little less aggressive than the electric eraser. And uh, so, it, again, uh, depending on the amount of variation of pressure that you use, uh, you can pull up more or less uh, tone from the work surface. Uh, and, and so it's always good to have a, a number of different um, tools that are available to you. Uh, again, these uh, these tools don't don't do the work for you. They just make your work easier. So uh, again, the, it it really comes down to your ability as an artist to see these details and recreate them on your work surface. Uh, again, here uh, I have my reference. To the left of me, uh, in black and gray, this is usually my main reference, regardless if I'm painting in color or in black and gray, just so I can see tonal values and make sure that I am going dark enough. Um, because this is a black and gray piece, I didn't need to refer to my monitor uh, for the color 
uh, because there was none. But uh, I will say that I did uh, have this image up on the monitor and I did blow up the details of the face when working on the face so that way I could really see what I was doing and try to capture those details as best as I can. Um, I will admit that I, I don't think that I did a 100% accurate job of capturing her face. Uh, it is, she, it's a very beautiful woman. Uh, it's just not, I, in my opinion, I don't believe that it's the model that I was trying to, to capture. Um, the face, just something in the face itself is slightly off. I don't know if it's her mouth or her nose, the cheek, eyes, I don't know. Something, something in this particular piece is, is, uh, doesn't sit with me, uh, a hundred percent that, that I, that I achieved, uh, my goal. So, uh, again, this was not a commission piece. This was just practice. This was for me to uh, try to get the creative juices going, try to um, really work out my, my technique, uh, make sure that the airbrush itself was uh, functioning correctly because uh, like I had said in previous videos, I had been having some, some controllability issues with my Iwata Custom Micron. Uh, I have recently made some adjustments to the packing screw, um, the polishing the needle, uh, uh, minor little adjustments to the airbrush. I finally think that I have it dialed in to the point where I will be using this airbrush a lot more than what I have in the past. Uh, again, you know, my other airbrushes, they do a great job, but uh, you just cannot argue that the uh, Iwata Custom Micron does give the most cleanest, crispest lines that there is. So, again, We'll uh, we'll just continue to work with the with the airbrushes. Uh, when when I do a full color piece, I use several airbrushes. Um, I first try to evaluate what colors I see in the piece, and then I will try to load uh, a different airbrush for each color that I'm going to need. So that way, I'm not having to go back and try to clear out the airbrush and uh, prepare it for the next color. It's just ready to go in the airbrush. And if I do uh, damage an area and I need to retouch up a color that, that I had already previously laid down, uh, again, I'm not having to clear out the airbrush and go back and try to, try to fix it. So that's just uh, one of my strategies and how I like to paint. But uh, for this piece, because it is monochromatic and uh, we only need one airbrush, uh, I did go ahead and stick with this one airbrush for the remainder of the piece. Uh, here we have gone ahead and shifted our attention to the lower half of this uh, painting. Uh, on the tank area, you will notice that there was a figure, uh, a mustached gentleman uh, with a large brimmed hat, possibly... Zapata or um, Pancho Villa, uh, not too sure, but uh, it was very faint and just uh, tried to put the initial markings and then dust over it lightly with tonal value. Uh, again, I will step back, look at my reference, look at my artwork, see that I need to revisit uh, some areas and go back in and retouch them up and continue to work them out. Uh, I don't work on one area, flesh it out completely, and then uh, move on to the next area. I am a little chaotic. Uh, here you'll see that I just went to the uh, fork on the motorcycle and then to the background. Then I jumped to the holster for the uh, for her pistol, and now I'm back on the fender. Again, I will see values. I'll see things that I want to work on. I'm trying to build up the tonal value around her so that way I can really see what uh, colors I'm going to need next or what values I'm going to need next. So I uh, try to concentrate on this uh, to, to lay in these values. Again, remember, go lightly uh, at first. Don't lay in the color. You can always darken it up later, but if you go too dark, it is more difficult to lighten up that area than it is to darken it. Uh, here you'll notice the technique that I'm using to, to tone the legs. It's a sweeping motion, uh, starting 
off very, very lightly, barely pulling on the trigger and building up through several passes the opacity that I'm looking for. Again, you don't want to spray in heavily. Uh, you'll get spidering, you'll get blotchiness, and it doesn't look good. You want to uh, start with the light mixtures, uh, and then if you truly need more tonal value, you can always go in with a darker mixture in a separate airbrush, which you will notice in a couple of spots uh, later on, I will revert to the PS270 that still has that one-to-one -one mixture uh, in it in order to just get a slightly darker value in some areas. But uh, for the most part, uh, the rest of this is just uh, fleshed out with the Micron. Uh, here, I'm just uh, drawing in these uh, little fins on the engine itself next to her leg, not using a shield, just controlling the airbrush and stopping where uh, I believe her her thigh would uh, begins uh, and the end and uh, just basically again drawing out the 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 shapes that I see in this engine uh, filling in with tonal value uh, gradually getting darker and darker till I reach the value that I want uh, here in a moment uh, we are nearing the end of this piece uh, the engine uh, compartment was the last part of this uh, piece. Uh, you'll notice here that after working on the engine a little bit, I did have to revisit the tank section just to darken up that value because I do see it darker in the reference than what I had laid down on uh, on the piece. Now here in a second I had a uh, kind of a major malfunction, a uh, splurt of ink that came out uh, this, again, it could have ruined the piece, but since it's in the lower section and uh, not the pivotal uh, point, uh, you'll, barely no you'll notice that I barely miss a beat after it happens and I just continue to work because uh, I do come in and I had planned on uh, using a texture effect stencil all the way around the border uh, to, to give it that uh, worn out uh, look of torn paper or uh, just uh, to match the rough cut lumber of the background. Uh, so here I'm working on the shapes, I'm uh, working in those tonal values, and uh, as I'm working, all of a sudden, boop, there it is. <laughs> as you can see, a big blast of ink all over the uh, lower right corner, uh, but I just continued to work uh, because I was, again, this is variations of tonal values of highlights and darks. I could always go in with the eraser and pull out any highlights I need. But as you see here, I made the decision to break out the stencil and just spray in that area. I do go in and work it a little bit more, continue around the whole piece and finish. Piece and we are done. If you enjoyed this and uh, like the process, please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for joining me and you have a good day.